well, 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 look who it is. It's the gentleman from the Black Tower podcast, one of which you just pulled out another handle of Sailor Jerry because he's a monster. It's fresh. Here, fresh. Uh, Hi, guys. actually really tinny in my left ear hole. It really was, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. That's Earbud fine. warning. Pain was right. worth the gain. Yeah, yeah. Earbud warning well after. After, after the fact. Just edit, we'll fix that in post. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. As someone who's ever edited anything, that phrase is the worst. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's why it's, that's the joke. I know. But hi, guys. We're all be here for the same reason. What's that reason, you might ask? Hmm. Nothing better to do with my time. Ah. <laughs> that sounds yeah, about Yeah, that's it. Right. No, we are here to listen to some taint and to put it in our ear holes and maybe our mouth holes, perhaps, depending on how much of you or how many of you have hot sauce still. Um, and all of the other orifices that should get tainted. Because this is another episode of the Black Tower podcast a real time podcast i am one of your wonderful hosts daniel your amen con hail i sing the songs and wave the flags and i am one of your despicable hosts <laughs> josh your soravon mahale i call the lightning and i'm just a general all-around jerk of a guy <laughs> And I'm one of your, hey, that guy is kind of all right, host. <laughs> Andrew, you're by Jean Mahale. I send the emails and click the buttons. <laughs> I love that. Also, I'm I like, like, I'm like, I feel like the pog of the Black Tower. Oh, because you like getting, we all, we all know I'm not. No, not those kind of pogs, but I appreciate oh, different the pogs. <laughs> different pog. <laughs> I'm a person other than Grunt, but I actually really <laughs> like your your interpretation a lot more. <laughs> oh yeah, me too. So also, I, luckily, it, I didn't learn my logistics from Russia, so we're not failing our invasion. So we're good. Oh, it is interesting. I I uh, nobody feels bad for Russia right now. All right, no, 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 <laughs> no that's, that's not. True. It was just sad about war, not Russia. Fuck Russia. Um, <laughs> But I did notice, Josh, that was that was very hurtful to my heart hole because you used you said despicable. And then you didn't use the accent. I just like the right now, the, the live chat is typing pog, which is the way it's being spelled is also a search category on Pornhub. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, Andrew. I, I don't know how to tell you this, but you're actually a fat ass white guy, so it's, <laughs> you're not fucking you're not wrong. A, a ph a ph no exactly a phat. I I was very oh clear. no I know it's the, the p a w g fat ass white guy. But yeah, and now so, I'm being attacked in the live chat. I mean, that's that's, 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 well that's, you that's why I'm the battle leader because the clap of my dummy thick cheek sounds like sword fights. Yeah. <laughs> so. it's, the, it's the Hulk thunder clap. That's what yeah. <laughs> I love it. I put the wave in thunder wave. Have we... right? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, now that you've heard a little of what we do, we here, got that rolling power chili power. ring of earth and fire. No! <laughs> in case, just in case you didn't know before. Uh, if this is your first episode of the Black Tower Podcast, please <laughs> hop on over to blacktowerpod.com where you can go ahead and find all of your Black Tower needs, whether that be uh, all of our social medias, uh, the last five um, episodes that we've done, as well as the merch store, forums, all of that kind of stuff. And once you have gone to Black Tower Pod, you're going to need some energy. You're going to be feeling a little tired. You're going to be feeling a little uh, that that 2, 3 p.m. slump is going to be happening. So you're going to want to pop over to w.gg 
and get yourself some energy powder. It's really good stuff. It's uh, actually very, very nice tasting, um, especially if you mix it well. Uh, there's very little of that like normal chalkiness that you get from like a, a post workout or or you know other energy supplements along those lines. It's very very well done. Tell the the people at W that we sent you using the the code. Remind me what it B is. BTP Bravo Tango Papa. There you go. Or you can use the Tower. link in the show notes or description below. Also correct. So. Go ahead and click that link or pop over there after you've gone to the website. It's just BTP. Super simple. That's what we like. We want you to be able to do it drunk because that's what we do most things as anyway. So oh, yeah. Also, also, when you go when to the, Black the website, I think you're about to say what I was going to say. Go for it, Josh. Uh, you did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. Yeah, you did it. So you say it. I you, did do you it. tell everyone. Oh, okay. Do Check it. out the photo album from WatCon. We've got our WatCon photo album, and it's up in the pictures. Oh, great. Hey, hey, you guys are awesome. We put together, I think there's about 60 photos on there. Photos. So if you're chasing the WatCon high and you just need a little bump, a little something to get you through the next until the gathering madness, then I need you to go to blacktarpod.com, scroll down, and go see the WatCon photo album. And a bunch of you are probably on there. If you were at WatCon, you're probably in there. If you're in there and you don't want to be, though, let me know and I'll take you out. Um, yes. Or if you got some pictures that you were like, oh, my God, Daniel was acting the fool, and I got some pictures that we need to put up on there, send them to me. I'll throw That's them up on there. Legit. I pictures from that. late Wednesday night and super late <laughs> Sunday night that had me in them are automatically barred from inclusion because I've already seen one picture. I'm like, I don't remember taking that picture at all, <laughs> but at least I looked kind of sober. So there's that. Also, I do want to make sure I we all warn you from here at the Black Tower. If you go to Black Tower Pod and you look at the photos, you can snort the photos. Please don't snort the dubby. It's really bad for your nose. It's you want to drink okay. the dubby and snort the photos, not the other way around. It's, it's accelerated my brain. I'm not smarter. <laughs> I'm just dumb faster. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's big brain time. It's big brain time. <sighs> Which yeah. is good because the person we're talking about tonight has a pretty big brain. That's accurate. Though I don't know if he always uses it the most effectively. He does seem to have a big brain. But he fails up sometimes. He also fails. He's got up. big brain with ego blinders. Oh, I like. I like uh, that. Uh, I like that. I, I would. I would agree for for one. Well, one. I can't. I can't describe we'll it. Get into it. We'll get into it. Yeah. Before we'll we there. go into this, let's pop on that spoiler condom and make sure all of the people don't get. Paint these spoiler jizz in their eyes <laughs> or yeah. ears. Now on to a completely different spoiler warning. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was welcome hoping. to the Black Tower, a Wheel of Time podcast. All right, let's check this one. Huh. This podcast will likely be spoiling books one through. Oh, what's this? An envelope addressed to me. No name though. Let's see what's inside. Oh my. This podcast will likely spoil all the books in the series, and apparently being a Patreon will expose you to information that should be left unseen. Protect yourself by pulling that spoiler condom all the way on. And I need a drink. That's way more of Andrew than I have ever wanted to see. <laughs> Why would you bring it down there? <laughs> Why because would I can. <laughs> if, if you, you can, can why wouldn't you? It, do it. If you got it, braid it. Or it's something. neat. It's clean. <laughs> awesome <laughs> all right so now we can tell you what we're talking about tonight because all of you are protected and then andrew can tell you about why he agrees and also disagrees with josh's earlier comments and that is today on the black tower podcast we are doing one of our wonderful and some of my absolute favorite segments the background breakdown uh Back for those you breakdown. Are, for those of you who are uninitiated in the background breakdown, it is where the Black Tower boys 
sit down and do a bit of a deep dive into a character who is not necessarily given the love or the page time or the accolades or whatever it is that we think is sort of missing about their arc in the in the books um but is also very very instrumental to the story obviously you have your Evans Field vibe obviously you have your Moraine your Lan you have your Suan Sanche you have you know all of these characters that get a, a good deal of page time a, a good deal of of you know weight to their story and things like that and then there's the people who sort of maybe don't um for this one it's actually a very specific kind of background breakdown and i guess you could maybe argue that our like normal background breakdown doesn't totally fit for them because this person does actually get a not insignificant amount of page time and i uh, i would say sometimes accolades but sometimes we do the background on just characters that aren't the main quote unquote characters from the books. And well, this definitely and of course, this is one in a line. series where I think that a number of the one the others that we've done in this series are in that category. And we just figured out that we, you know, finish out the series and do whatever. So this is going to be a background breakdown for Saken edition. And we are going to talk about the biggest and the baddest of them all today. Mr. Nablus himself, Ishamaya, also known as Balzaman, also known as Moradin, also known by like 37 other different names that I do not have time to go in. Father of Lies. Well, that's technically the dark one. Glowy eyeball guy. That's Balzaman. (laughs) Stop it. We're going to just call him him Elon. Ooh. Well, that actually was his name, Elon yeah, yeah. Morin Tendronol. Yeah, but can you? I mean, I, I can. Think, I think he takes on a new name after he falls because maybe Elon <laughs> wasn't such a dick. We we actually sent know. out a tweet uh, about this particular character, um, oh, and the 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 uh, the tweet stated that he's a ten. But he's the ultimate nihilist and wants to bring about the destruction and end of literally everything. Sort of. No, mm. that's kind of his goal. No. Sort of. His goal is to die. Yeah. And I not gonna... be reborn. He he wants that's to That's just one uh, avenue that lines up with his yes, master that will exactly. get him what that he was, wants. He doesn't really that, care about time going on thing. or not. <laughs> he's an I said he's a nihilist. Yes, he's the ultimate nihilist for himself. And he's fine with nihilism for everyone else as long as it gets him nihilized. Listen, I don't know what you mean, but I don't know what the Nile River has to do with any of this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be completely honest. Ishamael is... Is, is he also one of the few rivers that flows north? Is that what's going on here? I mean... <laughs> maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, so... <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, almost like about uh, him just a little bit before he before he becomes a Forsaken. You mentioned his early or his original name already, so let's yeah. go into a little bit of who he is before he becomes a Shamael. Yeah. The, let's the uh, we know. I'm curious. Let's ask our live chat because I can always edit this to make it shorter if it's silent for a while. <laughs> what, without looking it up, hopefully. Uh, what was Ishmael, or rather Elon Morin Tedernal, Tedernai's uh, profession during the Age of Legends? And Beep. there's about three answers that you can give. Beep. I know the answer to this. He that was is pretty, pretty fair. Of Tesla. Um, he was. <laughs> the... Oh, wait. Hold on. Wrong guy. My bad. That's 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 more than in the first age. <laughs> well, this is the age of legends. Oh, no, professional the first age. second placer. Oh, yeah, oh, have... oh, so Beth, oh, Beth, that is that is definitely one answer. Yikes! Matt Stagg oh, that was the man. Burn Honestly, award. The, sad, the saddest part is three of the Forsaken were just professional second placers because oh, yeah. Sama. Ishamayel and Demandred were all like oh. professional sucks. And well, Landfear was also 
Yeah. Oh, also true. Well, yeah. Does she is, by the end is she technically a professional fourth placer because she comes in after Avienda, <laughs> after Elaine, and after Men? Or is yes. that just their their because all by first that time she's moved on to Perrin, place. and Perrin is no, like no, I actually I she actually says that. choke me, Daddy, and he just goes full animal and is like, whoops. Well, good thing it's in the dream world, so no one knows. It doesn't count yeah, as murder if it's in the dream world. It does. I actually, well, it doesn't count as murder if it's a forsaken. <laughs> so I mean, it does, but it doesn't. <laughs> so it's itchy. just not murder we're sad about. Yes, yeah. yes. There we yeah. go. That, that. It's still uh, yeah, it's still murder. It's still murder. That's true. It's still <laughs> um so let's see. Theologian is another good answer there, and possibly spectacular Josh. So Beth got it first with Philosopher and Possibly Spectacular. Josh got it second with the Theologian. There, and you also mentioned that he wrote books. There is a profession uh, that he does it books. called author. Books! Author was the other profession that we would have accepted. He wrote but, books. Uh, yeah, Badass was a, a, that's, I mean, a pretty good thing. So he wrote the books, Analysis of <laughs> Perceiving <laughs> Meaning. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So he wrote right. books such as Analysis of Perceiving Meaning, Reality in the Absence of Meaning, and The Disassembly of Reasoning of Reason. And considering his entire book repertoire sounded like a My Chemical Romance album, somebody probably should have figured out the dude's got some screws loose. But Lou Saren was too busy fiddling his diddle, making a whole family for him to murder later, so he never noticed. Oh. Ouch. They don't. I mean, and also dark tonight. All the I mean, also had had loose there and notice we wouldn't have much of, as much of a story. You. Um, uh, interesting though his his journey, like he really does just kind of get sucked down this like philosophy hole. Jesus and, Christ, you are getting progressively louder. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening, but it's like your microphone is adapting, and it's like adapting the gain to max. <laughs> My microphone's like, this asshole yeah, is going to be loud. There you go. Okay. So it, it's interesting. He gets, like, sucked down this, like, philosophy hole, right? Okay. And he starts he starts to, like, philosophize about the turning of the wheel and, and spinning our souls back out. I'm wondering, and, and I don't recall any instance I do not illustrated... Know. But I'm wondering if there's an instance in the Age of Legends or at some point in time during his journey where he's like, where he gets almost his own sort of flicker, flicker, flicker moment where he sees past lifetimes, future lifetimes, and he just goes, I don't want this. Like, is there something in his story? Is there a moment in his story that we get to see that explains why he's such a nihilist prick? I mean, I, I think yes and also no, because I, I definitely feel like it's strongly hinted at that really he is just one of those people that philosophized too hard. <laughs> and well, yeah, and there are just got, some people who get like really down that rabbit hole of philosophy and go, there isn't any hope. Why are we doing this? There are other people who go down that same rabbit hole and go, this is the meaning of life. This is why we're doing that. And it's just like the different sort of triggers in your brain that, that are getting people with mostly the same information of just like these, you know, philosophy rabbit holes that are just like... Well, he, he starts off with philosophy. Yeah. yeah, he starts off with philosophy about like the nature of time and the nature of the wheel. Yeah. Um, and it it does move over into theology, um, into uh, a set belief uh, system about how the wheel works. And it winds up being like so many, uh, revo so many at the moment, revolutionary uh, philosophers and theologians uh, not potentially fully considered out. Now his is definitely not fully uh, considered. Yes. Because if you're going to uh, acknowledge that time is cyclical, and that it goes around forever, uh, then you also ha would have to acknowledge that everything that can happen will still happen, but has also already happened, and which is his biggest pitfall. Because I, I, I agree with his thought process 
up to the point where he ignores the fact that it's already all happened and hasn't happened yet at the same time. Because the whole reason he, you know, announces his betrayal in the Hall of Servants to all the Aes Sedai, including Lucere, is because he sees the Dark One's success as a statistical inevitability. If the Dark One gets an infinite number of chances, statistically, eventually, the Dark One will win. But what he fails to realize is that all of these battles that will ever happen have already also already happened, and the Dark One has lost every one of these battles and will then, by extension, lose all of these battles because time is cyclical and the same events repeat themselves. Um, and, of course, we know through confirmation from Robert Jordan that though the events may happen slightly differently, the overall outcome of each event is still majorly the same. Um, that the you know there will still cool. be an Apollo mission that's going to happen in the first age. It just may be called yeah. the Ares mission, you know, to steal sure. from the Martian, which is a great movie. It, but an interesting tidbit here, though, when you're talking about the statistical likelihood of the Dark One eventually being successful, the Dark One only has to win once, sort of. If he if the Dark One wins. That's that is statistically Once, right, or technically right. Then the wheel is destroyed, time and existence are destroyed. Yes. The creator and the forces of the light have to win against every single attack with zero uh, uh, with no word? catastrophic failures. Well, with with zero variance, like they can't they can't lose. Period. End of story. They have to win mm -hmm. every single time. I mean, they for, can kind forever. of lose. They just can't they, really uh, lose. Yeah, I don't know about that. I, I I think we've already had this episode, and maybe we should have. Stop it, it Daniel. We're supposed well, to I mean, agree on everything. So, well, no, the, the facts the facts of it are right. That is factually how it is. However, can the Dark One win? Technically, by the way, time works in the middle of time. No, because he has already lost and will lose because all of these battles have already happened and are still yet to happen at the same time. This well, is a different episode okay, that will, we need to have. Yeah, I was going to say, I will pop in there. I've been dying for another metaphysics episode, to be honest right? with you. I love the metaphysics. Put it on so the schedule. I will, I will pop in there just real quick. If, for example, the creator is actually still around, uh, and or a situation where the creator and the dark one were always around together before the creator made creation and he didn't actually create the dark one he was always there then even if the dark one successfully destroys time the creator can just then recreate it therefore the dark one would be able to win as much as he wants and it just wouldn't matter because then the creator would just recreate time. So again, it, it plays a little into your sort of definition of what is winning. So because what you're saying is when you exist outside of space time, yeah. <laughs> everything and nothing can happen an infinite number of times uh, with no consequence. Basically, <laughs> yeah, no. And, again, the theory that, that is, for example, the dark one that is the exist. ultimate lesson of Wheel of Time. If you right? get to a point where you can exist outside of space-time, you can both fail and succeed infinitely with no consequence. Well, so basically, like, the other like every anime actually, ever, become God. Right? There is the other theory that I kind of like, uh, I don't necessarily super agree with, but like, uh, that there was only the creator and him actually, or them, it, whatever, actually creating creation created the dark one and also creation and then destroyed itself effectively in creation in that scenario josh's statement is completely correct that uh, if the dark one ever wins it's ruined it's done and so the the forces of the light always have to win because if the creator is gone effectively then they can't just do it again and then if the dark one wins he wins wins but, like, again, I've never actually fully subscribed to the theory that the creator is gone and that he was destroyed in creation. I actually, you know, think that it's more like there's the Dark One, the creator, and then the creator makes creation, and then they sit there and talk <laughs> with creation the whole time. 
but the creator is more hands off. <laughs> so here's this thought, and I'm only going to say this because if I don't, I know I'm going to forget it, and I feel like it's a really yeah. good thought. And if existing I, outside I of yeah, if existing outside of space time means you can win and lose infinitely with zero consequences, mm -hmm. then it the the term the, like the scope of winning and losing only exists within the created material world. Yes. I completely so agree. In, in terms of the human understanding, yes, the dark one only has to win once for their for what they perceive as creation to be destroyed. But for the dark one and the creator, they just reset the pawns on the cosmic chessboard and start playing another game and see how long it takes and who gets checkmate. Basically. Well, and again, that even lends itself... So what I'm hearing is Men in Black was right. We're all just galaxies in marbles <laughs> that aliens are playing with. Correct. Yep, 100%. You heard it here first, folks. Uh, Wheel of Time is actually just a confirmation of uh, MIB. And we're all... That's that's what we're done. Uh, we are actually done with this episode. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's now about this. And we've all agreed that... So say we all... So say we all. Well, this is perfect because if, if there was other <laughs> well, other than Rand and the creator and the dark one, if there was a character that truly like by their core of who they are warranted a conversation into the ideologically into the ideologies, philosophies, and theologies of the wheel of time and the metaphysics, it is yeah, it is Ishmael. 100 percent Oh. So but uh, so let's just this, let's give some go ahead. Go ahead, Josh. Well, I was just going to say, this actually provides a really great segue into the background breakdown of Ishamayel, because these are the conversations, I, I like to think, these are the conversations he's having. To our knowledge, to our understanding, he does not have the experience or uh, uh, position that Rand has at the end of the books, which is to exist outside of space-time to exist outside the pattern and observe it being to observe creation yep um so he's sitting there going i don't want this anymore i i some i have to believe that somewhere you, you know you don't just come wake up one morning and go i don't this is bullshit existence is bullshit unless you're a me seeks <laughs> there you go. Moradin is a me seeks. Um, but a Mr. Me something look at me. had to have happened in his studies somewhere along the way that led him to believe or to, 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 to lead him to the conclusion that I don't want to do this. I, I, well, I maybe, we talked about maybe it. it's the, yeah. Like maybe he, it's in compulsory. his mind, it is a statistical inevitability that the yes. dark right. one will win. Yep. And so, so if he's he, like, he, if if the world is gonna go to shit, what's like the oh, dude, the depression spiral that that creates? Yeah, that you're absolutely convinced that no matter what you do, eventually the world is gonna go to shit, and your soul will perpetually be spun out and reborn because souls are neither gotten rid of just or to die created. Yep. Yeah, just to die again and eventually live in a horrendous world where everything has been destroyed, or not even a world to just be erased from very existence it kind of is like a cosmic why the fuck am i here yeah well and it's interesting because on one hand it almost feels like the fact that ishamayel or elan goes down this philosophical rabbit hole decides this for himself comes out in the hall of servants betrays everyone that he's ever or that he's been involved with, and then lives for another thousand, like a couple thousand years, 3,000, something like that. And at the at the time where we pick up the book, he's been alive for 3,000 years or more, whatever, 3,000 years plus however old he was. Um, and 3,003. Feels that way. I don't know. Give or take a few hundred. <laughs> right. And, and still feels that way about life, the universe, and everything is kind of a testament to like how how philosophically messed up he was but on the other side i do throw in there the 
he's now been serving the Dark One for 3,000 years. And what kind of messed up head stuff does that do to you? And how much more do you want to be out of this cycle if you have been a dark, the, the dark one's pawn the entire time, rather than actually really getting more free will and more opportunity to do things that you want and things like that. Because I feel like I would be so much worse down that sort of like sad emo kid thing if I was serving the devil for 3,000 years. Mm -hmm. Well, so so here's the thing. And he there's was this... actively fucking with me for three thousand yeah. years. Like... So there's this cataclysmic event, right? Of Marin drilling into the bore and releasing the Dark One. Um, and I don't know how close uh, Elon here was to it, but that shit was must have been traumatizing because obviously you can't theorize about the Dark One until you're aware of the Dark One's existence, which wouldn't have happened until right around the, the bore, uh, when the bore happened, uh, leading to the collapse. Mm. So in a very short amount of time, Ishmael, well, because they had no knowledge of what this was before. They didn't even know there was an evil that existed prior to, um, prior to I, this moment. I don't think that's actually true. I'm pretty sure that they knew about the Dark One, but they didn't know what this power was that they were tapping to, into. They didn't know that that was the Dark One's power. But it feels like they have always sort of known that there's like the entity for good and the entity for evil, which they're calling the Creator and the Dark One. I just didn't, I just don't think they knew how closely they could actually interact with. Mm, I don't those. think they knew that the Dark One existed as an entity. Really? Okay. I think that I think they had a philosophical conceptualization of evil. Um, like some like like many people would argue the, the concept of the Christian God and the Christian devil is um, that it there's nothing concrete that says either one exists, but there's a conceptualization of good and evil. Sure. Um, with varying degrees and there's plenty of arguments we made. Yeah. But as far as like knowing that a physical entity of evil exists to serve or to uh, enact change on the world. Nobody had any idea prior to this, or, or the knowledge had been lost because the Dark One has been in a perfect seal since some point in the last like six ages, um, or six, five ages since the third age, or what we yeah, know is the ish. Third age. however many ages um, there are. Now, he may have been unsealed in between then and then resealed, probably who the hell knows. Um, but so the knowledge that the Dark One was a physical entity definitely vanished from, I think, from from more from the mortal world. Because okay. if we can't even keep the knowledge of what a of what a spaceship is from the first age to the third age, how are we going to keep the knowledge of who the Dark One is? Whenever his re-release had to be equally as cataclysmic, <laughs> the re-release, yeah. Dark yeah. One reboot. Ugh. Yeah, I, the Dark okay, One redoes. But anyway, I, I also feel like this is a different episode, so I will yeah. pop it. But in anyway, the schedule. Yeah. Yeah, so what I what I'm getting at with this is in a very yeah. short time frame, he goes from just doing his philosophical work that is already super pessimistic. So he's predisposed to these kind of pessimistic ideologies that things are fruit that are, are are futile and like reason is falling apart. Even though you live in a fucking utopia, you psycho bastard, um, and just looks at this yeah. and says okay look this is all pointless eventually the dark one is going to win there's no real point ultimately in resisting the dark one because eventually he's going to win a flawed thought because he doesn't think okay well if i believe time is cyclical then i also must believe that for us to still exist at this point the dark one has lost and will lose every battle in the nature of time um but he makes it to that point in his thought where he's just like, it's statistically inevitable and I'm just the first one to think of it. So now it's going to happen because I'm a genius. Um, like half of all philosophers and theologians historically are. Got that right. Um, but the thing I respect the most about Ishmael is of all the forsaken that betray Luce Theron and the rest of the Aes Sedai, there's only one motherfucker that goes before the entire group and says, fuck this shit, I am out. And it is Ishmael, whenever he goes into the Hall of Servants before the Aes Sedai and Luce Theron and is like, um, yeah, 
uh, I'm going to the shadow. And immediately they're a riot. So the whole world fucking found out. Like, you know, everybody in in the city was like, oh shit, like this guy that's almost as strong as the guy that's in charge of everybody just said, fuck this shit, I'm out. Chaos ensues. Riots are starting. There's no way we're going to survive. So let me let me just jump in here for a second because we talk about Luz Theron wanting to end the Dark One in his arrogance. Now, it was arrogant to think that you could destroy literally the embodiment of all evil. Absolutely. <laughs> he and Elon were friends in the Age of Legends. Elon forsakes I think it's the arrogant. light. I think it's stupid. Because well, you can do it. He forsakes the light. He says, fuck this shit, I'm out. After that, when things start going downhill, that's when Luz Theron gets his idea to attack the Dark One. This gives us insight into what happened there. Luz Theron lost a dear friend, and now he's seeing innocent people suffering. Now, did he make the right decision? Obviously not. As a person, right? What do we do with our heroes? We, we, we put them on pedestals. We say, oh, they're so amazing. And then you meet your hero and they're- Never meet your heroes. It, yeah, it's a never meet your heroes kind of a scenario. Luz Theron was hurting emotionally. And I, it, he had to have been. He had to have been. And well, because it's, it's not like just him. It it's, gives he's, he's losing people left and right. Not to mention how many people died at the moment that the boar was breached in the Sharon. Like, yes. There's no telling how many people he lost in that exact moment. And, and I feel like you've got a perfect example of two people looking at the same exact situation and coming to the opposite conclusion. Luz Theron is going, we have to do something about this. This is this is wrong. You you can't do it. And in his anguish, in his turmoil, he he lashed out. He did what he thought he could do to try and protect everybody, which is very Rand esque, I would say. I mean, which gives continuity to the soul here. Like brilliant, brilliant. That's a um, that's a good band name right there. Continuity to the soul. Continuity of the soul. I love it. Um, and then. Uh, Elan, Elan says straight up, no, 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 no. You're looking at this from the wrong side. You must this pay is going for to happen drive. again and again and again and again and again until we stop fighting it. And we just need to join with the shadow and end this cycle. I also love the arrogance in the ideology. I'm not saying he's wrong. But the arrogance yeah. to to have the mental uh, thought that I've figured this out, so I must be tied into this. So I fought the dragon for all of history, and I'm just going to assume that in my past lives I do. Now, I think there is there a point that he actually does remember all of his past lives, or does the Dark One just implant what he wants to be memories of his past lives? I mean, I feel like that's a question we can't really answer because I think he truly believes that's that why I asked the theory past question. lives, <laughs> but it's impossible for the audience to truly know whether it was real or... I think by the time we get to the books, he does see his past lives. I think that plays into the Dark One's hands. Knowing the conclusions that he's already come to, the Dark One says... Yeah, boom, there you go. See, exactly. It's just going to keep happening, Bro, buddy. We, we really have to do an Ishmael-inspired metaphysics episode on, like, because oh, I believe the opposite. I believe it's all bullshit. I believe he doesn't remember anything. I believe they're The influenced. creator's not benevolent. The creator just wants to spin us out, run us through his hamburger grinder, <laughs> spin us out again, <laughs> run us through his hamburger grinder, spin us out again, run, stop well, the cycle. Ig ignoring the creator's habits with grinder. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, where it seems like, uh, well, we have kind of two points where uh, the now 
Well, still technically named uh, Elon, but very soon renamed Ishmael's story seems to end for the Second Age. First, he is uh, handedly defeated. Uh, I say handedly like it was easy. Um, it was a very narrow defeat uh, that he experienced at the gates of Paradisan by Luz Theron. Um, and at some point uh, later on is when we get the the sealing of the boar, if you want to call it a seal, because uh, you didn't do it right, Luz Theron. The fuck. The band-aid of the boar. Yeah, the band-aid of the boar. Um, where it definitely does seem like Luz Theron was like, I'm going to destroy the Dark One. Oh, shit, I can't do that. Let's just put up a block. And it was, it was like patching a levee in New Orleans after Katrina. It just didn't work out that well. Yeah. Is it, is it still too soon to, to, to make comments no. about Katrina? No, no, no. Okay. no you're, you're good. You're good. Um, and so, of course, we get to the events of the prologue of Eye of the World, where... Uh, it looks like, even though everybody was sealed, uh, this seems to be the first iteration post-sealing where Ishmael is like, cool, I got 40 years to do whatever the fuck I want. Um, and the first thing he does is goes and fucks with the now insane Luz Theron, uh, heals him just enough so that Luz Theron can see what he's done to his family, thus earning the name Kinslayer. Uh, and then... Blue Star goes off to create Dragon Mount, and uh, Ishmael goes off uh, to wait to for him to be reborn. Well, yeah. Well, it's, he ends up going back. So the Forsaken are all called back to Shail Ghoul to the board. They're in a meeting with the Dark One when the board is sealed, right? And Ishamiel well, it's, it's not is sealed as a, much as it's spackled. Is, yeah, is spack, sealed, spackled, bandaged. Like it's, it's you know, it is. I what just it wanted is. to say the word spackled. I'm not going to lie. Spackle. It's spackle's a fun word to say, especially with an accent. You get spackle. Um. The the interesting thing here, though, is that he, for whatever reason, was farther away. From the the actual like event horizon, which was the looking oh, glass into the dark one's idea. domain. Idea. And then he, as a result, is able to touch the world for small so, periods of time. Idea. Every like six hundred years or something. What if? It wasn't that he was so far away from Shao Gol and the boar, but that emotionally he was so close to Luz Theron that Luz Theron still had reservations about sealing his friend away, Ooh. resulting in an imperfect seal of Ishmael. Ooh. I Ooh. Because we know channeling is so deeply affected by your mental state and emotions. What if Luz Theron just, because he was mourning the loss of a very dear friend, was like, I don't want to trap you in a sleepless dream for all of eternity. Here, you get conjugal visits with the world. I mean, not intentionally, but that was the bite. Because <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he runs around for four years fucking up everything he can. All right, that's what he does. All right. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. No, I I really like that theory. Actually, that's that's brilliant. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I like. I like it. Not just because I thought of it, but also because I yeah. thought of it. No, uh, I'm sure a hundred other people have too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the thing is, is that Ishmael, as a result of this, though, can touch the world, and is probably how the often? sole reason. And for how long? What? How often and for how long? I, I don't know the exact number. 40 years for every so, thousand. Yes, every thousand years he can touch the world for 40 years. So he... Roughly. It's, it's, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah just, approximately. And, appara- approximately. and apparently he can touch Adelorna. Actually, I'm actually pretty sure that well, Adelorna has given him years, permission anyway. I, I'm pretty sure it's 39 years for every 961 years he's in prison. Uh, oh. <laughs> um, I will <laughs> watch me. <laughs> Sweet Shamael, you are touching me so good, so good, so good. Shamael, <laughs> touching the hands, reaching out, touching the world. So, so we first learn of this uh, concept from Iran, son of Milan, son of Sanar. Uh, which, if it wasn't already obvious by the name, that's an Ogier. Ogier. Um, who was born roughly 50 AB, which is after Boar, I believe. Or a e, dwarf, probably depending wrong. on what series you're in. What the fuck is AB? I don't remember what AB is. After Battle, after Boar, one of those things. After Bitches. Um, <laughs> but had the, the, it was one of the first ones or the, that we know of that has, uh, after Breaking, Beth is right, after it's breaking. after Breaking. Um, that uh, he had heard claims that people encountered Ishmael as long as 40 years after the sealing of the boar. Um, and using lost manuscripts, Iran concluded it might have taken time for Ishmael to be brought into the prison with the man forsaken, and he might have been thrown out in regular cycles. Ample evidence exists, such as interviews with her dark friends, saying that as early as 983 and E, which is New Era, uh, they were receiving instructions from someone calling himself Baalzama. Um, so that's where we kind of get that it lasts roughly a thousand years or every thousand well, it's, it's technically like uh, Daniel kind of joked about it's not every actual thousand years if yeah. you're out for 40 years it's every 960 years roughly Yeah. Um, which if you're looking at 983 and E compared with 40 years after the breaking um, it, it lines up this will be about the time Ishmael is like being born from the asshole of a rhino like Ace Ventura, which is exactly like how that. I imagine him being thrown up. Yep. These rhinos are really hot. Um, so the interesting thing here is that, you know, a lot of people are willing to just say, you know, oh, he was sealed on the board, he came out every little once in a while, and that was it. I disagree. I think he is single-handedly responsible for rebuilding or at least deteriorating the integrity of the organizations that have been founded to rise up against the shadow as people know that one day they will have to. Um, oh, yeah. I think Andrew and I are with you on that one. That he spends his 40 years specifically walking around being like, fucking that up, fucking that up. Yeah. Definitely. Well, he's like, oh, I'm Absolutely. free. Everybody's getting along. How do the Trollic Wars sound? Let's do that. Right? <laughs> he he gives he late he's he's a very extremely intelligent person. Like, which is another reason I love these book series so much. You don't have uh, villains who are just dumb. You know what I'm saying? Like villains who are just like I hate everything and I want to kill everything. Yes, he, he he doesn't really hate everything. His motives aren't hate. His motives are, I've been given a promise, and so I'm going to do path. whatever I can to make sure I hold up to my end of the bargain so that I can receive the reward that was promised to me. That story is so familiar. We've made that story, uh, we've made that statement about Gawain. We've made that story about Rand. People live up to the reward that's promised them. And in Jamal this particular thought that his case, savior in life was the Dragon Reborn. It was actually a Black and Decker brand toaster in one of Elaine's baths. Sorry. I, I, <laughs> Dark. Very, I my, my brain right is now. like half all over the place <laughs> with like really shitty jokes and I just I can't stop Woo! myself. Okay, don't stop me now. Um, 
So the thing, the thing being with with the Shamayo having kind of sounds to like the you're world, talking about self fulfilling prophecy almost. I mean, yeah, obviously yeah, it's, it, it's it can be an external promise, but well, it's 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 something that it's 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 the carrot at the end of a string, right? It, I am it, the it's Minecraft a carrot pig. So to to get the donkey to go, you know, it's it's something that you want so badly. That you're willing to forsake logic, <laughs> ration, <laughs> reason. You're willing to do whatever it takes because you want that thing so badly. Nothing else matters. And that's why I said he's got he's an extremely intelligent person, but he's got ego blinders. He's what? so wrapped up in what he needs. Well, and this is one of the things that I absolutely love about this particular story and any other well-written story with a good villain. Because again, we have so many different uh, opportunities for this, in, or not opportunities, uh, examples of this in real life as well, where there are people who run around their whole lives absolutely thinking that they are the good guy in their story. And some of them are not. The, the also, best villains think that they're doing good. Well, and I was also going to say, but also there's this other piece of it that is the victors write the history books. So how many people are actually good people if they win the war, but are villainized because they lost? Yes. There are a shit ton of people out there who are well, actually obviously if you're good, you don't lose. I mean, that's uh, human's I mean, fantastical idea of morality. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it yeah. definitely wasn't created by, oh, I don't know, every kingdom since ancient Mesopotamia to make you buy into the propaganda of who's good and who's yep. bad. No, exactly. Andrew, totally. You haven't realized by now that all of humanity is equally shitty. Uh, <laughs> sorry and, to break the news to you. And, and equally, equally good. good. That's, yes. that's a fair point. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. And it's also interesting that, you know, to bring it back to this story, the Forsaken do not call themselves the Forsaken. They don't like that people call them the Forsaken. They are standing there for most of the, the story being like, for better or for worse, and for this reason or for that reason, we have joined this side of this fight. And we find ourselves to be the chosen ones, which is why we're here and we're doing what we're doing. And so again, it just lends even more credence into the fact that they don't necessarily, I mean, like, I, I guess sometimes they do when they even kind of admit that on occasion they're like, yeah, we know what we're doing is actually not good, but we're doing it anyway. But for the most part, I really feel like a number of the Forsaken, and especially someone like Ishamael, is standing there being like, this is the right thing to do. I don't need to have uh, to always do it in the right way. My ends will justify my means, and I will be the hero of this story because I will be the one who helps destroy the wheel. And even though people don't realize it, they want the wheel destroyed just as much as I do, and I'm going to help make that happen. Yeah. So I like I like this uh, question in the live chat because we're we're not going to get through a, chronolo a chronology of of oh, Ishmael and what he does. <laughs> so, but uh, Beth asked in the live chat, when did Ishmael abandon logic? Um, did it happen after he was in prison? <laughs> and basically, like, when did Ishmael go insane? Uh, because he is relatively insane in Eye of the World and truly seems to believe that he is the Dark One. Uh, and we've had a couple of theories proposed. Obviously, one of the easiest theories is, is he really insane or is he just playing the character really well? Because yeah. he's played a couple different characters over the last 3,000 years. Or uh, the idea that I kind of like uh, now, and I'm not going to lie, I, I did propose and I'm sure others have before, <laughs> What keeps the male forsaken from going insane channeling Sidene is the fact that the Dark One exists to act as a strainer, a filter for them, for Sidene. But if the Dark One is sealed away, 
and you're touching the world for 40 years, are you shielded from the taint just because you have an affiliation, even though the individual yes. is not able to touch the material world and filter it for you? See, I think the opposite. I would I say. think for the 3,000 years, the Dark One couldn't filter it for Ishmael, and that's what led to Ishmael's partial madness. Because do you think the Dark One would really filter out the taint to allow one of his minions to masquerade as him? So I, I would think the Dark One is so egotistical. He's going to be like, no, nobody's going to claim my name. Because even Shout Out Haran doesn't get that luxury. Well, but again, I mean, look at it. Look at what happens when he does actually die in Falma. Granted, again, I'm not saying that the Dark One doesn't say, or that Moradin doesn't say that the Dark One is punishing me for everything that I've done. And therefore, he wouldn't let me die again. So here I am. Like, Hello, Lincoln Park. here I am once again. I'm Are you falling to pieces? Everybody, cause the dog I'm going to make you fall to pieces. <laughs> right? But <at> <laughs> Who is time, pieces as why and uh, is everybody falling to him? He? <laughs> but I, I actually really feel like... Bang. I, I think that the Dark One actually cleanses Sidene for his followers. I don't think it's an active thing. I think that as long as they have the connection to the Dark One, that they're safe, well, and that the Dark One doesn't have to sit there every time and go, oh, are you using Sidene? Okay, I will take no. this up. I will take this I, up. And I think it's just like a a passive thing that's true about the the Forsaken. I agree with you. However, my question then is when he's sealed, for the time that the seal is fully in effect, now obviously it's an imperfect seal that does deteriorate over time, but there is a time where the Dark One cannot really touch the world. Is it so imperfect that it still allows him to play that function for the singular individual that is Ishmael, which is a completely fair statement to say yes to, I think. Or... Is he only there, only able to be there in an ideological sense? And because he cannot actually physically touch the world or the pattern, he can no longer act as a filter. Because if the Dark One exists outside space time, and the prison therefore exists outside space time, either he has to filter for everybody if he has a way of interceding inside Dean before it touches the pattern and goes into the mortal world and has a filter for everyone. Or he has just enough access to reach out through the bars of his prison and touch the pattern where he can still filter his taint out of Sidene yeah. before it touches Ishmael. So here. So is that what thing. we're saying? So, that he can touch the world just enough to filter it out for Ishmael? When you're talking you have to filter about. It out before it entered the mortal world, before it entered actual creation. I, I think this goes into kind of what we were discussing with the in, in the pre-show, right? So for those of you not listening live, for those of you who are not patrons, we do a pre-show um, where we sometimes we have a series called What Candy, where we discuss a couple things. Um, and you're getting a little bit of a preview into that because we talked about water bonds. What if... And, and we know, we know through other events in the book that turning yourself over to the shadow has varying degrees. There are some people who are just like, yo, I'm a dark friend. And there are others who make the trip to Shia Ghoul and have, you know, a, a physical change manifested upon them. Now, is that performed by a Forsaken? Is it performed? I, we don't know. That irrelevant for this particular maybe that's another episode varying degrees of dark friendery um in this particular case when it comes to a male channeler post tainted sidene i feel like you can have a water bond type relationship i mean we are talking about the dark one who has perfect knowledge of the one power and how it works. Um, at least a much deeper understanding than anybody on the mortal Correct. plane does. Yes, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm there. Who's to say he doesn't have a way or it doesn't have a way to, you know, serve as a conduit? So that also brings up the concept of when male forsaken or male chosen are channeling, are they channeling through the dark one? or through a process that's been established, which would allow them to not be affected by the taint. Now, we are to assume that this is the case, because as Modian basically says, you turn yourself over to the dark one, you can channel, no taint, it's cool. It's not until he's cut off from the dark one that he now has to, now that he's affected by the taint on Sidene. Correct. So for Moradin... Or for Ishamael or Balzaman or whatever. Is it the Dark Oath? It, it might be. It might be. Because that is. It might be the Dark Oath acting as a filter. Yeah. That actually would be a really good way to sort of do it. Um, because that, again, we know from the Oath Rod, for example, that you can actually magically do oaths that then tether you to some other thing. Until those oaths are broken or removed or whatever. Um, and so I think that is actually a, a really good... Um, that, that sort of like the dark oaths and everything is that connection to the dark one. And it is protecting them from Sidene rather than, again, the dark one needing to be active in it at all. Or that... Uh, that Again, enough of that goes through that imperfect seal yeah. that Ishamael is not screwed the whole time that he's using it while the Dark One's away. Which I, was the crux of my question. Like, I, I don't dispute how the Dark One does it, uh, although we don't really exactly know how, but that the Dark One does it. The question was then, uh, of course, is it because he's only there's only one individual, one entity out in the world that he even has to worry about? It, that he can reach out through an imperfect seal and his influence extends enough through that imperfect seal that he can then shield Ishmael like he would natively by Ishmael being one of his subjects and his followers from the madness, from the taint on Zidane. Because it's it's also, it's equally as great of a justification as to why Ishmael acts the way he does. But the problems come in whenever you start learning the more intricate and manipulative aspects of Ishmael's actions where he he's manipulating events to orchestrate things in a way to where everybody becomes free like if if you think Ishmael is not running around or trying to get dark friends to run around and find the Quindiar seals that are crumbling oh then and that might be how he's doing it honestly the (laughs) tape that's being filtered off for him might be being filtered into the Quindiar seals augmenting how they're being destroyed because they're definitely not destroyed by natural time so maybe the dark one is just filtering because because we know from how morden channels the true power that he is addicted absolutely addicted to using magic for everything like yeah oh i want to (laughs) see half a half a millimeter further i'm I'm going to use magic to the true power and there's no reason to to you to the dark one if if you're shielded from the taint on Sidene, there's no reason to think that you're going to channel any less than Morden does when he's channeling the true power yeah. and Sidene, because he's still protected channeling Sidene. Just why would you channel Sidene when you can channel the true uh, the true power, true source? With true, power. true power. Yeah. True source um, is one power. True power. Yeah, yeah. I literally looked over the live chat because I saw you mention that earlier to somebody else, and I'm like, I, I just... <laughs> <laughs> so... But what if that's part of what's providing the mechanism is like this this use of the taint? It, oh God, what if I really all the love taint that. and the madness that everybody is going through is slowly being siphoned off by the little bit of the dark one that can touch the world to degrade his own prison, and that's why he did this as a counterstroke. It's not an effort to just say "fuck you" for doing this to me. It's a "fuck you" for doing this to me, but also here's a way for me to break out of what you've done to me. And so he's slowly siphoning the madness and the taint from every, all the males that channel to degrade Quindiar until more shoddy posts something that probably makes no, it. No, 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 no. It actually, it, it's totally with your point. 
Later hints Ooh. that is, or later hints suggest that it's the true so power causing the So our fact checker has just again. It's an not Robert point. Jordan who just said outright that you're correct, but at the end of the thing, the footnote suggests that that is true. That Robert Jordan has hinted either himself or in the books that it's actually the true power that is degrading the seals. And, and of course, we do that just all a layer That's of why true we were, power we were just on to it. We just knew that. That's that's how. Cool. Yeah, what if the taint is just I a layer of true power that. on Sidene that has like it's like it's like yes. um it's like a a network attack. We're gonna allow yes. you through all ports, but I'm gonna capture all packets as you access each port, I and then that. all that access gets filled. Oh, okay. Yes. I, I, no. I, I, if I like you it. don't have permission from the Dark One himself to touch the Dark One's essence. You go insane. You're you're not allowed. You have just walked into a room where you are not wanted. That would also explain why he's able to selectively grant people immunity from the taint. Yes! If it's just yes. a layer of the true power. Yes. We've, all right. We've unraveled the taint. We which is cracked be the code. New, that's a new YouTube channel. The uh, dark gonna one come out. is the taint. It's just a layer of the true power, which is just power from the Dark One, which is just yes. his already filtered version of the One Power. It's like so, the One Power, but through me, because I have that so would power, mean that would mean him that the sawiest of saw angrials. So that would mean that all male channelers who turn themselves over to the shadow would then have permission to use the true power. But don't I think they'd be granted have, permission to not. They don't. They'd be. They'd be they exempted they from know the damages do, of yeah. the true power. Yes. Which Hopefully. has been described as more addictive and more wild and uncontrollable. Actually, that's that's another part of this theory that I actually kind of like like here, which is what if it's actually the the dark one. That touching the true power is touching the dark one. And then the dark one gets to decide what happens to you to a certain extent. But again, it turns out as madness because he just can't like he can't actively just like choose what happens to you because he doesn't have that much control over the world. But like every time he touches you, he just like gets you more and more crazy. Every time, every time he's you give him access to your body and your mind every time that you go through that true power. Yes. And he just touches you just a little bit more with his good hand, with his strong hand. With, with his strong hand. So, with his strong hand. hand. With his strong so for everyone that heard like our intro to this some episode. Some people are more susceptible to that touch than others, which is why some people go crazy faster. So for everyone that heard our intro to this episode, this is no longer <laughs> officially a background breakdown on Ishmael. It is Will yep. of Time <laughs> Metaphysics sponsored by Ishmael. Um, yeah, because I, I like what again I, our our fact check posted here. This episode, but yeah, so this is yeah this is uh, quotes of an interview with Brandon Sanderson, and, and I'm going to kind of paraphrase because uh, the original question was about the domination ban. Was it made of Quindiar? Uh, the original one was yes. The copy was not. Uh, or let's see, the original <laughs> one was, but the one would assume the copies. No, what? That one was destroyed. The one that was destroyed was a copy, but one would assume that the copies are made of Quindiar. Two, um, true power works by destroying the pattern. Everything that is done with it involves damage to the pattern, making yes. the flame of Tarvalon weave even more important. Uh, right, more yes. important because of more Aden. Um, hey for example, when we see Ishmael I'm, I'm travel, he does so by poking a hole. Yeah, he pokes a hole in the pattern, just like the butthole of a rhino. Uh, and Ace Ventura, wait, I've already made that joke. I shouldn't make it again. Um, no, nope, we're making it again. So, Quinyar can be destroyed by holes. using the true power. There's another way to destroy the panel. Footnote uh, from where Brandon said in another interview that the second way Quinyar can be destroyed is by the unraveling of the pattern. I don't see that as the second way. That's the same way. It's just a, a different mechanism. Like, you either directly just unravel the pattern or use the true power, which already works by damaging or unraveling the pattern. Sure. So, um, so let's 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 gear this in for a second, because the original piece of their dick game so strong you can poke holes straight in the pattern. Heyo, 
to quote Tenacious D. Use the cock. Okay. No, uh, to bring this back to sort of an Ishmael centric conversation, how did he go insane? We've already established that he's got access to the Dark One's essence, the true power. The taint and the true power are essentially the same thing. How did I don't he see do Ishmael having insane? access, having unfettered access to the true power. I see him having an exception in the firewall that is the true power, a.k.a. Yes. the taint, on Sidene. Even more so. Even so, more so. That would mean that he's not affected by the taint. That means his so, insanity. What if it's just a natural byproduct? You're and out that's for exactly 40 where years, and then you go that's into a dreamless going. sleep for 960, and then you come out for 40, and then back for another 960. That has to and, be maddening, especially when your whole... Re so imagine this. Within the span of a year, you get you witness an unspeakable, devastating event, a cataclysmic event, which is the board, right, being drilled. You come to this philosophical conclusion, which is you working off of the same mechanisms you worked off of your entire life, that inevitably it's all fucking pointless. So you go ultra emo instinct mode. To make a Dragon Ball Z joke, for those of you that haven't seen Dragon Ball Z in a while, there's a thing called Ultra Instinct. Dragon Ball Z GT. No, that is super, sir. We don't talk about oh, GT. Good. Yeah, you are. Sorry. I don't me. talk about GT. But anyway. I also don't so, talk about GT, but only because I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> You're better off for not knowing what the fuck <laughs> GT is, honestly. Um so you do all of that only to be defeated by your best friend, to watch your best friend seal uh, all of your new compatriots away, which you honestly have no allegiance to. And that explains why the Forsaken don't really care about each other. They never had time to build an actual allegiance with each other. They were just asleep the whole fucking time. But so you go through all of this and then you wake up every 40 or every 960 years to a drastically different world where you have to now enact as the only available living true actor on the Dark One's behalf and do what he says. Imagine how strongly the Dark One is finally, after 960 years, being like, I can finally talk to somebody, do the thing. It's probably like the same way Penn and Fane go, kind of goes insane from all the brainwashing at, uh, at, um, at Shao Gul. What if it's a similar effect to Ishmael that, like, eventually just so much contact one-on-one -on -one with the Dark One drives him actually insane? Uh, because he's the only one the Dark One can work on every thousand years. Because the rest are still the way into sleep where the Dark One can't really talk with them. But, okay, here's the deal, though. Lanfear describes like my idea. being bound in a dreamless mm -hmm. sleep as being agony. Mm -hmm. Ishamael is the only one who, who is able to touch the world every so often, right? So it's, it's the difference of being sealed away from something and never being able to touch it and being sealed away from something and getting just a taste every so often which i would argue is worse yeah now is well, the other part gets... is imagine being forced to sit in the corner and stare at the wall and that's what being sealed away is you're just yes it's just nothing and time feels so much longer because there is nothing so it's got to be yeah. agonizing but is it as maddening as doing it for a span of time and then coming out and being the sole focus of the communication with the dark one. Yeah. No, and it, oh god, it I I think what eventually drives him to insanity is not being able to just settle in. Like we can accept almost anything. As human beings, we're incredible, okay? We can accept just about anything. We can come if we do to, say so ourselves. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we, can, we can tolerate, yeah. deal with, survive. Just, I mean, there's a lot that we can are, do. Our, our, are we living our on the same earth amazing. here, buddy? Like, our we are basically bodies are amazing. Functions. 
for the past like 30 years. I don't know how much of that I've seen, but I also don't live in a country that but actually is like third world. So the thing, the thing that, that, that gets me here with a Shamael is not that he's insane by the time I have the world happens. Actually, it's more how in control he is. I, I would, I would posit that the state of affairs that he's in, in the eye of the world, when he's tormenting Rand, Matt, and Perrin, is a necessary chain of events. Small decisions that he's made over the course of the last 3,000 years that seem wildly unhinged with where he was at the beginning. But as he progresses and as he has conscious thought over 3,000 years, a vast majority of that being imprisoned, I feel like it's kind of fair for him to be like, wait a minute, am I the Dark One? Am I not the Dark One? It doesn't really matter. If I say I'm the Dark One, I'm cool with it. And then 100 years later, you know what? I, I might actually be the Dark One. Like, Turns out he's just, like, he's only using the appearance, like we saw in the show, to troll the shit out of uh, Agenor and Balthamo. And like, who huh, were, I look like you were now. the next two that were sealed. <laughs> no, but think about the timeline of 3,000 years. Okay? Think about the timeline of 3,000 years. If we accept the, the, the current calendar that, you know, 2022, that Jesus was born 2,022 years ago... And that if he were alive today, Jesus would be 2,022 years old. Ishmael was sealed a thousand yeah, sure. years before Jesus was born. Which means we have to take away like any modern convenience and or invention that we can think of. Because think about it, 200 years ago, they were looking at you know, okay, if you want to heat a house, you have to have a fire. If you want to have warmth in the winter, you need to put on more clothes. That's just how it is. Oh, guess what else? We, I mean, there's just, there, there isn't the technological capabilities that we have even 20 years ago, even 50 years ago, even 100 years ago. You go back a thousand years and you're looking at, you know, they still have cattle in the military. They still have like livestock as military assets. You go back fifty years before that, and it's it, it, it's it, it's amazing how technology. We're about to start has, up my battle cow. <laughs> it's amazing how technology expands, and where we're at, where we're sitting. You know, you've got you know twenty years ago, this thing didn't exist. This this phone, this cell phone didn't exist 20 years ago um touchscreen wasn't a thing 20 years ago it it's 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 amazing to think and you you look at someone who's been stuck for three thousand years watching essentially existence go by them and then they go oh i've got a thing that i can jump out and i can i can influence this and i can i can set the foundation for the dark lord's return and oh shit, now I have to go back. There's so much more I needed to do. Next time, I'm going to tell them I'm the dark one so that I can get more done. I feel like his insanity is a result of a thousand years of scheming, plotting, paranoia, and trying to get that carrot. He was chasing that carrot. And, that, and that's where his insanity comes from. Because when you got those blinders on, when you get that tunnel vision and you can't see, you can't have perspective on a scenario, you don't understand the sacrifices you're making chasing that reward. And that, a hundred times out of a hundred, will lead to a very unhealthy mental state. Those are my final words on this particular episode. Um, so, guys, be sure to and never. He did only also have like three chances. Yeah, basically, never yeah. lose perspective. No matter how bad you want something, make sure what you're sacrificing is is actually worth it. Yes. Don't don't give up who you are 
in the pursuit of something you think might be worth it. Simba, there's a, remember. There's, there's a lot. There's a lot there. Uh, and often making poor decisions. As the star spells sex. <laughs> often making poor decisions in these situations only leads to negativity and not growth. So that's it. I like that's that. It. I, I don't have any more final thoughts because I like Josh's and I'm going to just hard agree. Um, please be safe out there. Please be safe with your mental and your physical and your emotional and your philosophical and your theological. All of the olds, just be safe with us. Andrew, what do you think? Uh, I mean, no, I, I, how can I say I don't agree with that? Like. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you to be safe with your stuff. I'm going to say be what you want to be uh, within reason. Uh, and if it doesn't bother anybody else, then do it. And if it doesn't bother you what somebody else is doing, like, and I say bother, it has no bearing on your life, yeah. leave them the fuck alone. Leave them alone. If it doesn't affect your life, leave them the fuck alone. Shut the fuck up. Focus on your life because there's definitely something that all of us can make better in our own lives. Uh, so if it has no effect on you, uh, then uh, pretend it doesn't fucking exist, I guess. I mean, which sure. is counter to the argument of morality, but who are you to impose your morality on anybody else? There you so, go. And this is why we come why to the Black Tower. Which right. is Thank a good you. lesson from Ishmael, because he's trying to impose his morality on people. <laughs> right. right? Yeah, don't do that. This has been another so. lesson in what is a slippery slope in logic and ethics from yeah. the Black Tower podcast. It's also a slippery slope in the Black Tower <laughs> choosing a topic where we're like, we're going to talk about Ishmael and break down the character. Just kidding. It's a metaphysics discussion part okay, one because we didn't get that we, far into it. Kind yeah. of with Ishmael. did break him down as a character, though. I don't know. That's true, but also not. But anyway, I mean, we are maybe in light of his history. job, but right. Yeah. We're going to no, go ahead and talk more is. about all of this. We've already got some gears turning and, and topics put into our, our schedule for the rest of the year. So thank you for being part of that. Thank you for listening to us tonight where we spitballed a lot of stuff, where we decided some things for ourselves as well as the Black Tower, where we hope that you got a little bit of stuff out of it, where if you didn't, we hope that you get something out of it next week, whatever the case may be. We are happy to have a place where we can go ahead and talk like this as friends and as ridiculously philosophical people. And we hope that you enjoy going ahead and listening to that as well. For all of us here at the Black Tower Podcast, I have been your Amon Khan Mahail, Daniel. And I have been your Sorban Mahail, Josh. And as always, we hope that you have appreciated tonight we hope that uh you've enjoyed your dose of taint we hope that you leave here just just a little bit more mad than you were when you first arrived growth it's about growth it's about growth <laughs> i have been your watch on hill andrew who had just enough tainty beverage to have two or three what i felt like were really awesome ideas um <laughs> Which is a, a rare event uh, in my own mental space. I make a lot of good jokes, but the times that I have like really good ideas where I see both of you go like, oh, like that's kind of a cool idea. Whether it's wrong or right, I just like the fact that the idea was cool. Um, but chase your dreams, chase your ideas, and have just enough taint, whatever that taint is in your life, uh, to have really awesome ideas. Agreed. I like that. Stay frosty, San Diego. We thank you very much for going ahead and being with us today, uh, this evening or this morning or whatever it is for you. And in case we don't see you again, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Trouble just fitting.